Namaste. My name is Dr. Ramya Upuluri. I am a consultant at Apollo Cancer Center, Chennai, in the Department of Pediatric Hematology, Oncology, Blood and Marrow Transplantation. I am here today to talk to all of you about blood cancers in children. We all know that in this day and age, childhood cancer is curable and the most common childhood cancer is leukemia. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia is the most common childhood cancer, which is basically a type of blood cancer. So what happens in blood cancer is this. We all have bone. Inside the bone, we have bone marrow, inside of which we have stem cells. All blood in the body is formed from stem cells. So you have red cells, white cells and platelets. Red cells are important for hemoglobin. Platelets are important for clotting in our body. White cells are several types. There are neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils and basophils. Neutrophils are like the policeman in the body. They are important to fight infections. Lymphocytes are again important to fight infections and there are types of lymphocytes called T cells and B cells. Normally all of these cells in our body they will form and they will die, they will form and die. That's a normal procedure for all of us and that's the normal process that happens in blood formation. But sometimes we don't know the reason why but there are some changes which happen within the stem cells and in the lymphocytes whereby the lymphocytes will go on forming and form bad cells which are called lymphoblasts and these lymphoblasts when they accumulate within the body that is called acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Now children with acute lymphoblastic leukemia can present in any way. Some of them may have no symptoms at all but most of them come with symptoms like fever which may be of a prolonged duration, a lot of body pain, bone pain, they may have sometimes swelling in the neck which means the lymph glands which can get swollen. They may come with a big abdomen because of the liver and spleen which have gotten swollen or they may come sometimes with symptoms of bleeding because the platelets go down in the body so they may have bleeding symptoms on the skin or sometimes from the nose or the mouth. So they can present in various ways. For diagnosing leukemia, of course we do a complete blood count, we do a CBC and a peripheral smear. In the CBC, we look at the amount of red blood cells, the hemoglobin, the white blood cells, the type of white blood cells in the body. We look at the platelets, the amount and the distribution. Then we go ahead and do a bone marrow aspiration in the child. Bone marrow aspiration again is not like an operation. You give the child some med medicine to sleep. When they are sleeping so that they don't have any pain, we take one drop of blood from the hip bone where you get those bone marrow cells and you examine them. In the bone marrow aspirate, you look at the smear where you look at what kind of bad cells are there. And once in that you know that the child does have bad cells which are the blasts that I was talking about, you do a test flow called flow cytometry which tells you exactly which type of leukemia the child has. From the bone marrow samples, we also do certain other tests called cytogenetics which means you look at what type of mutations, what type of changes within the chromosomes in these leukemic cells are present. All this is now very very important for something called risk stratification. Risk stratification is the key to getting good outcomes in children with cancers. With all these tests, you, you classify children as what kind of risk they come into and based on the risk that they are in, you give the appropriate kind of treatment and chemotherapy. Now treatment for uh, leukemia includes mainly chemotherapy which is basically just a bunch of medicines which are given either through injection or tablets. So chemotherapy drugs are usually given for about four weeks in a scheduled pattern through international guidelines and at the end of four weeks you do another bone marrow test and you look for something called measurable residual disease which is done through a machine whereby you look at even those bad cells which may have been left behind in the bone marrow which cannot be picked up by the naked eye and this is an extremely important test called MRD. So you've done four weeks of chemotherapy, you do MRD at the end of four weeks and then you plan further after that. 
all the chemotherapy medicines that we give children do have certain side effects which are all temporary side effects they may get vomiting they may feel nauseous they may not eat adequately they may feel tired they may have stomach pain fever and there will definitely be hair fall as well but all of these are temporary side effects and once you stop the drug the child gets better and all of the hair will come back all of these side effects will settle usually for all or leukemia there is no stage because we know that the blood is all over the body so very often parents will ask us what is the stage that the child has come into so there is no stage for leukemia because it's blood cancer and blood is all over the body and therefore there is no stage and all children are given treatment based on the parameters that i told you whereby we risk stratify them in alls the treatment after giving the four weeks may be for another 4 5 months of slightly intense chemotherapy followed by about 2 or 3 years of maintenance chemotherapy the other two types of leukemia that i want to touch upon is aml which is acute myeloid leukemia which is basically leukemia which arises from the neutrophils not like lymphocytes lymphocytes anything will cause all while if it has to do with neutrophils they get aml now aml is slightly different in the treatment that you need to hit them hard and fast so you give intense chemotherapy for about 4 months and usually at the end of it if they are well we don't give any further treatment cml on the other hand is chronic myeloid leukemia in cmls the treatment is very different as compared to what i just spoke about cml there is something called a magic bullet or targeted therapy so in the cml on the leukemic cells of cml you have certain kind of proteins and certain expression of a protein called tyrosine kinase which comes from a specific translocation called translocation 922 or it's called the philadelphia chromosome because it was discovered first in philadelphia so there is a specific targeted therapy or a specific tablet which targets the specific protein called imatinib or dasatinib and these are the drugs which we start these children on and they will be on imatinib for a prolonged period of time it's like taking medicines for diabetes and hypertension that's all so they will have to be on this one pill for a long time they can do go to school normally they can do go to college normally etc on this tablet so that is cml now the main question is will my child live normally after all of this after all this thing that has happened how will the quality of life be today in this day and age with the excellent supportive care that's available with the excellent facilities that are available and the treatments that are available more than 90% of children with leukemia are curable in these children who live after more in the group that are more than 90% where they live normally they can go to school normally they can go to college normally they can get married have a normal life of course after completion of treatment we do need to keep them in follow up for late effects which mainly include how how well are they growing how well have they attained puberty we need to check echo regularly for their heart functions we need to do thyroid function tests regularly but otherwise these children do live normally and they can go and do activities like the rest of us 90% of children can live normally after completion of treatment thank you